Welcome to A Pearl in Every Cow Slips Ear. This series was recorded here in our classroom with actual students. You just get to listen in. We are using Christian Light Education's curriculum. This is Language Arts 4, Book 1. Language Arts 4, Lesson 9, Written Communication and Punctuation. Okay, if you want to know the definition, a bit of review, if you want to know the definition of the word verb, where will you look? Index. Index? Yeah, glossary. Glossary. Good, the index will tell you where to find it, but the glossary will tell you what it means. What do you call the main noun in a sentence? Subject. Simple subject. Great. Um, what can be used to find the simple subject? First of all, find the... Verbs. Verb. What does a noun mean? Person, place, thing, or idea. Good. Person, place, thing, or idea. And what job can a noun have in the sentence? It can be the... We kind of said this before. Predicate. Subject, actually. The verb is the predicate. The noun can have that job of being the subject. Okay, let's find the nouns in this first sentence on the board and underline the uh, underline the nouns and put an S so, over the subject. Lyle. Lyle. Good. Lyle. And. Dusty Lane. 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 Great. Which one is the subject? Fife. Lyle. Lyle. Good. Fife is the verb. Okay. Now, March, Mark, Maroon, Marble, and Mar. Let's put them in alphabetical order. First of all, crossing out all the letters that are the same. I see M, A, and R in all of them. Now, March. which one comes first? Mar. 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 Good. March. No, marble. March. Mark. And maroon. Maroon. Good. What does maroon mean? Well, it's a peachy color. It looks like the okay. It's pink. Okay. It's a color. Pink, it's, I think it's kind of a brown red, yeah. but it has that red in it. Maroon. Um, maroon also can mean you marooned someone. Um, maybe you were going along with, maybe you were uh, sailing your boat and you hit a sandbar and your boat got stuck on the sandbar. You say, We marooned, we were marooned in the middle of the lake. We were stuck there. Um, so it can also carry that idea about maroon. It can mean two different things. That's another meaning for it. Be kind of a verb, actually. I decided to maroon. The chalk. That means I just threw it up somewhere and went walking away. It was left hanging there high and dry. No one to help it. Okay. Now, today, written communication. Written communication, writing things down, is something that's being lost in our world. People don't write as much. They want to just talk. And now with WhatsApp, you can just send a message by just recording your voice instead of even having to actually text a message. But especially writing formal things is being very much forgotten. People aren't using it anymore. And this is sad. Um, because written communication is very good for several things. For one thing, it helps us put our thoughts clearly into, into uh, clearly out so that we can even understand ourselves what we are thinking. Sometimes you can't really understand something until you can write it. You put it on a piece of paper, and they're like, oh, now it makes sense. Now I understand what I was trying to say. Um, writing also uh, helps to record exactly the way things were said or done. Whenever there's a meeting, usually there's someone in the meeting who's the secretary, and that is the person who's writing the notes of what is being said. So that later, if someone can't say, oh, didn't we talk about this? You have it written. You know. It didn't change. Uh, papers don't forget things like we forget things. Um, it also helps preserve things for many, many years. If you write something down now, your great, 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 great grandchildren could read what you wrote down. Moses wrote things in the Bible, and we read them today. And he, we read basically what he wrote, what Paul wrote, what Peter wrote, what John wrote. So it preserves things for many, many generations. It's also a way of communicating across the distance that you can't shout. You could take a letter and you could put it in a little bottle and you could float it down the stream to your neighbor and your neighbor could open the, the bottle, read the letter, and know something that you wanted to tell him that you couldn't shout. It was too far to shout. But if you throw it in the river and he pulls it out of the river, you can communicate with him without actually going there. Um, you can put things in the mail. It does the same thing. Today, you can call and you can actually just talk on the phone to someone from far away. But we can also email and send letters. So written communication is good because you can cover lots of distance. 
it is recorded exactly as it happened, it doesn't forget, papers don't forget, and it can be preserved for many, many years. But we must write carefully, we must punctuate carefully, so that other people can understand what we're writing. Written communication means nothing if you don't understand what it is. Right now, Josephine writes things on a piece of paper and she makes all these squirrels and whatever, and then she says, this is a rabbit. I didn't know it was a rabbit until she told me it was a rabbit. Because it was so <laughs> unclear. So we need to write things clearly so that other people can tell what we're actually writing. And to do that, we're going to follow some punctuation rules. And I'm going to cover the rules it gives you here in the lesson and illustrate each one. For commas, so we talk about first of all, for um, making commas. For a comma, we put a comma between the day and the year in a date. We could say today is September 16, 2021. Put a comma between the day and the year in a date. We also put the comma between the city and the state or province. Um, I grew up in Hagerstown, Maryland. Put a comma between the city and the state, or the province, or country. Um, put a comma after yes or no at the beginning of the sentence. No, comma. You may not. No, you may not. No, comma. Put the comma after that. Um, put it before words in a series. I like... Uh, not a comma there. I like dogs comma, cats, comma, and children. Since these words are coming in a series, dogs, comma, cats, comma, and children. Um, write a comma also after the person you're talking to. John, comma, come here. It's getting pretty sloppy down there. John, comma, come here. And comma after the word you're talking to. And then a few rules for colons. A colon. And a colon looks like dot dot, two dots. Put a colon between the hour and the minute of what time it is. Right now it is about 11 dot dot 26. Put the colon in there. And put the colon in for Bible references. John 3 colon 16. Okay, there's a comma rules and colon rules. Um, carry on with your work. You should be good.